Cows, dogs, me, palaces. Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff and in this video I'm gonna share with you the three secrets of a professional guitar sound. And all three secrets start with the letter S, incidentally. Slide, syncopation, and silence. Again, slide, syncopation, and silence. Now, what do I mean by slide? I mean that you can take any boring phrase and turn it into a more interesting and richer sounding phrase, even a chord progression by adding slides. Let's just take, for example, two chords, A and C sharp minor. Okay, this is the predictable sound. shouldn't be full volume it should be just hinted at but you can take the bar and slide it up to the fret you want and then add the chord okay let's go from here to B minor here so bar to four and then bar to seven okay now if you overdo it then of course it becomes a motif and it might lose its uniqueness but you can use it every now and then to spice up your sound now this is about chords you can also use it in finger style i've showed you for example in the blues lesson you can take the a chord and slide into it okay or even the d chord okay? you can slide into the chord okay and even Okay, when you do the turnaround uh, C7 and B7 back to E7, you can, instead of doing C7 and B7, you slide from two to three. Okay, you can even do, okay, if you want, but again, this is a bit too much. Just spice up your playing by sliding. And I also mean soloing. Let's take the most obvious cliche in guitar music, the pentatonic scale. Okay. okay, and I'm playing the A pentatonic scale, the A minor pentatonic. Okay, now let's add slides. Immediately it's more interesting. Okay, or... Okay, you can play a note and then slide into it again. You can do the same thing uh, on two sets of strings. For example, five on the E string is also 10 on the B string. So you can do something like this. Okay, and you have the same note, okay, the uh, A note, but first you play it and then you slide into it. So, see? Um, it adds instant richness to anything that's even slightly a guitar cliche. And you can do it anywhere with anything. Slides, just adding slides. Just one fret away, okay? You don't have to do huge slides. And sometimes huge slides are awful sounding. Uh, Okay, there's too much, but just a hint of a slide, just one fret apart, two frets away, instantly more interesting. See, just noodling around, just try to add slides, don't care about, uh, about the bars, don't care about the timing, just get used to sliding anytime you like. Um, that's the first um, soundtrack. The second soundtrack is syncopation. Syncopation is a little more difficult to get used to than slides um, because it's a concept. Syncopation is and one. It's an offbeat. Um, but most of the time towards the first beat of the bar. So we have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, Three, four, and one. That's syncopation. And you want to try it with chords 
and see how that goes. Immediately, it'll give your chord progressions an interesting professional sound. Let's take the most basic chord progression, C, G, A minor, and F. Okay, this is on the beat. Let's try it with the end one. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. See? See? When you add that offbeat sound, it creates instant groove. And when you change the chord on the end one instead of on the one, it creates interesting transitions for the ear. It creates a more professional sound. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with changing the chord on the first beat, but if you want to give it that extra edge, that extra groove, change on the end. The same thing for finger style. Okay. Now, what's going on here? You hear a note out of the next chord before the next chord's bass note announces itself as the next chord. For example, C, G, okay, note first, then the bass. Same with A minor. Okay, and then the open E string announces the C chord before the bass actually announces the chord itself. So that's syncopation and you can hear syncopation everywhere. Every song that even has a little tiny bit of groove has off beats in it and has syncopation in it. It's way more prevalent than you think. So just learn to hear it and learn to apply it. Again, one, and, and, and. Okay? The note of the next chord before the next chord arrives using the first bass note of the bar. Okay, that's a very, very complex explanation of a very simple thing. You just play end one, and on the end one, you change the chord, or play the next note. And you can use it in soloing. Now, in soloing, it's a little bit more difficult to, um, to demonstrate without backing tracks. So, um, just Listen and try to hear the beat. Down. And. And. Okay, so let's use the same pentatonic line again. Okay, every time I ended a line with this note, the seven on the D string, it was a syncopation. Try to, I'll try to, uh, bounce my leg or do this for the beats. I'll try. See? It was and one. One. Okay? Again, difficult to uh, demonstrate without a metronome or a backing track, but once you get the idea of a syncopation, you can do it. Once you learn to hear something, then uh, you'll never forget it. You'll just keep doing it. So that's the second concept. S um, slide, then syncopation. Now we have silence. Silence is the single most important thing in music because silence creates rhythm, silence creates drama, silence creates articulation. And um, Maybe you've noticed yourself that there are those players that keep playing all the time, just running all over the neck, and keep doing these amazing licks, but they never stop playing. They just keep adding notes and adding notes and adding notes. And for some reason, that doesn't impress you as much as it should. But then you get guitar players like Guthrie Govan or Greg Howe, and they're insanely fast as well, but for some reason they're more interesting. Why is that? Because they know the power of silence. And silence is important to insert between licks, between phrases, even between notes. For example, listen to this. Okay? 
This was a very, very boring lick. But if I shorten the notes and insert some silence in between, it immediately makes it a little more interesting. Eh? It wasn't the same lick, I don't remember what I did, but you see that it gives it a character. The silence between the notes gives it a character. Instead of... Eh? Just legato all over the place. So, um, again, also in fingerstyle, let's just take a chord. Okay, the most uh, interesting moment when I played it was when I let go of the chord for a second and created silence. Okay? Because everything else just blended uh, together, all the notes, there was no articulation there. But if I do this... Okay, insert some silence into it, it immediately becomes apparent that, that there's a groove and that there's articulation in it, that there are more important notes and less important notes, notes that are in the forefront and notes that are in the back. Um, also when you play uh, with a pick or just strum. Okay? Now the silence between the two chords was the moment where the, the ear got a little rest and it's as if it's, um, it's an effect similar to syncopation because you get, okay, you get the, the moment to breathe before the next note arrives. And while there's nothing wrong with continuous playing, okay, just continuous playing. Okay, the same chords we did before. Okay, continuous playing. Okay? No silence whatsoever. But there's still silence in between the, the low notes and the high notes. Some of the bass notes fade away, so there is a sort of a silence in the balance between the notes. You don't pick all the notes um, in the same volume all the time, otherwise it would sound very, very monotonous. Now, this is a genre of itself, okay? There are genres of music where you need to play everything very, very loud. But even in heavy metal music, they know the power of silence, where you get something like this. Okay, something like this. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous in an acoustic, but I'm giving you a musical example. And you can get something like this. Okay, something like this. Now, there wasn't uh, a silence per se, but there were uh, low volume notes and high volume notes and muted notes. And the silence was prevalent between the volumes of the notes and between the, the strong chords and the background chords and between the preparation and the punch at the end there. Okay, so just um, just have silence as your best friend. And also in soloing, again, don't uh, run all over the place all the time. Give the solos time to breathe so you can tell a story while playing. If you keep playing all the time, you don't have time to listen to what you're playing and build your musical story. See, I was just listening to the music and while I was playing, I started hearing the background and started hearing the band playing in my head. It wouldn't have happened if I just kept playing around. See, it's not that interesting. You need to give your music time to breathe also for yourself 
uh, to be able to listen and, and digest your own playing and figure out the way to go to the next uh, to the next line. Now, of course, I'm talking about improvisation because I'm improvising my example. I, I always love to improvise and to surprise myself and to come up with new examples um, just to keep myself interested in my own music. Um, but even if you're playing something pre-written, uh, make sure you write it in an interesting way. Remember, uh, there's... There's a show-off aspect to music, of course, but that's not the only thing there is. Your main goal should be to have fun and to make good music, and good music isn't always fast and furious. Uh, most good music actually is very, very slow and mellow. So um, just keep that in mind. So slide, syncopation and silence, the three pillars of good guitar sound and actually of better music in my opinion. So you can take it, you can leave it and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I don't see a reason why not. There is a ton of free lessons over here and I upload a new one every few days or so. So uh, join the Lick and Riff community. I'll be happy to have you. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Go play!